What's on many fans? In this video, I'm making a plasma generator loosely based on the Dawn of War video games. This project was pretty fiddly, but I'm really pleased with the result. Hope you enjoy, and of course, if you like anything in this vid, hit that like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to stay up to date with my projects. Anyway, on to building. <laughs> I start off by printing out these templates on 1mm cardstock and then I cut out all these bits and this does take a while. If anyone's interested in the templates let me know in the comments and I'll share them. Off cam, I've glued the bits of the template marked corrugated paper onto corrugated paper just using a glue stick and then cut them out. And then after this, I glue the bits marked together. You'll see um, with the template, I've written letters to, to show which bits join together. Hope this all makes sense. Anyway, after gluing, I put baking paper on top, add a weight, and wait for them to dry. All the bits of the template marked CB are then glued onto 2mm chipboard just with PVA and again baking paper and weight and leave them to dry. For the main supports I don't glue, I don't put glue on the bottom section. Uh, I use a light to shine through so I can see the line and just apply the glue on the top, top section. This bit kind of sucked, but I now cut out all those chipboard pit bits using a combination of scissors and a sharp craft knife. I have a sharpening stone on hand, which I do use regularly. And then those unglued sections of card on the main supports are also cut off. I want the main supports to be one centimeter in width, at least for the main section. So I space them out with just little offcuts of chipboard. So I'm using two mil chipboard, so I just use three little bits of offcut in various locations. Glue it all together using PVA, and then glue the other side of the support on. Just making sure it's aligned by, you know, sort of standing it up and putting on its edges. I then do the same thing with the roof, again making it one centimetre deep with the aid of the offcuts, and then I glue some drinking straws in the cutouts on the top section of the roof. I don't actually glue the bottom on yet, 
uh, because I want to paint it all black inside, which I do off camera, because I know you can't get to this after it's all, all put together. Oh, riveting time. Again, I'm using my fingernail jewellery beads and I just get them into place with my damp finger, manoeuvre them around with cocktail stick and then a dab of super glue and push them into place with that cocktail stick. So I do this on all the card sections with the tiny little crosses in the corners. I do jump around quite a lot in this project, but anyway, I'm back to the main supports now and I glue all the edge pieces on just using PVA. Next up, we glue the side pieces onto the main supports down at the bottom, and I'm making sure they're flush with the bottom and the back side so they stick out a bit of the front. Just to make sure everything's correct, I test fit the supports and floor sections and then get them into the correct positions using the edge pieces as sort of a marker and then I draw some marks on the supports as to where the top of the floor sits. So it turns out this is 1.7 centimeters up from the bottom of the supports. So I mark this on each side of all four supports. Make sure the two parts of the floor are, um, you know, aligned. I trace the top part onto the bottom. And then again, I add some offcuts of chipboard just on the inside of those lines we've just traced. And I make this gap one centimeter deep and then I glue the top section on. glue the roof sections together making sure they're properly aligned and I actually made a mistake here with the template and I've made the the joins to the main supports a bit too wide I just deal with this here but I've actually edited the template so they're flush with the main supports now For the front bottom section of the supports, there's a little gap. So what I do is cut four 2.5 by one centimeter rectangles of chipboard. And I glue them in and then add card sections on top.
Now this part is actually kind of needless, unfortunately. Um, I cut a hole out in the, the floor, in both top and bottom, so I could get something in. Because initially what I was going to do is put some LEDs inside the bottle, but because I've painted with a brush, the light shows all those brush strokes. Uh, I think I need an airbrush. Anyway, so forget those holes cut into the floor. Um, I've basically cut the top and bottom off a ridged drink, drink bottle at a height of 13 centimeters and then glue this onto the floor in that circle with super glue. Okay, again, I know I jump around a lot, but I'm going back to the roof now and I glue the edge pieces on. And again, because the template here isn't correct, I have to add extra pieces of card where the roof meets the main supports. I do that a bit off camera. Sorry, but I'm out of shot for a little bit of this. But I've got two sizes of straw, one just a tiny bit bigger than the other. And I cut lengths of the smaller, smaller sized straw to fit those kind of notches on the main supports. And then I cut some smaller sections of the bigger straw, put those over the ends, and then glue the whole thing into place on each of the supports. Right, off cam, I've base coated the bottle with a darkish blue and then I proceed to dry brush just with a small makeup brush, lighter and lighter blues, almost almost getting up to pure white in some sections. I was trying to make it look as though there's a band of energy moving up. Again, would be much better with an airbrush, but best I can do. After all that paint's dried, I glue all the sections together with PVA. Ah, mistakes were made. I didn't cut the bottle entirely straight, so I have to fix this now. The bottom's fine, but not the top. It doesn't line up properly. So to correct this, I glue a one centimeter strip of card around that top, making sure it's flush to the roof. And then I use the cutouts from the roof section, the top, top part of the roof, and I glue these on onto the roof on each side to keep the bottle top in place. Then after this, I Mod Podge everything, prime it and base coat with burnt umber. Painting time. I've covered the bottle itself with masking tape to avoid any mistakes. And with the painting, I start off dry brushing 
all the sections which will be metal with just silver. I paint the supports, or the main parts of the supports, with a mix of red and burnt umber, and I do several thin coats of this. And then off camera, I paint all the straws a light blue. Washing time, I give the whole thing um, a black wash. That's my homemade black wash, which again is black paint, a load of water, and a drop of dish soap. And then I dab dab this off some some parts with with tissue, mainly the supports and a little bit on the straws. As a final part, I do just a little bit of rust in a few sections. And again, this is sponging on burnt umber, followed by some orange. And that's the job done. Complete. Here are some photos of the finished piece. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you again another time. Cheers for now. <laughs>